Hello and welcome to our webinar where we aim to provide you with information on our higher education programmes and the opportunities available to you. With us today we have our Head of Department Viran Armin together with programme managers who are on board to answer your questions. If you have any questions please use the chat functionality and the team will answer. We can also take questions after the webinar. Can I ask please that everyone's video cameras are turned off and audio set to mute for the duration of the webinar. We don't want to keep you too long and are aiming to run for around 30 minutes. We'll also record this session and post the link on our website. We understand these are uncertain times and want to assure you that Oakland's College are here to support you on the next stage in your education journey. Before I hand over to Viren, on behalf of the college, I would just like to thank the NHS and key workers for all their amazing work throughout the coronavirus pandemic. So now I'm going to hand you off over to Viren uh, to take you through the presentation. Thank you, Viren. Thank you, Nadia. Um, and welcome all uh, to our participants here today um, who will know a bit more about higher education at Oakland College. Um, so what I will be looking at today and discussing will be the foundation degrees, high national diplomas, certificates and extended degrees. Um, so I'll flick on to our next slide. Right, so our higher education provision at the college, at Oakland's College, um, is twofold really. Um, part of our provision uh, works in partnership with the University of Hertfordshire and they're mainly our foundation degree and extended degrees uh, which I'll talk about a bit more later um, and we also have qualifications that are accredited by Pearson's um, and they're namely our higher national diplomas and certificates. Um, I guess our ethos at the college is to, to provide local higher education um, qualifications yes in partnership with the University of Hertfordshire and accredited by Pearson's but also um, affordability, uh, which plays a main factor in many people's decisions when going into higher education. So, foundation degrees and high national diplomas, uh, what are they? Uh, both are two-year uh, full-time or part full-time study um, at HE level. Uh, we also offer part-time routes in our higher national diplomas and certificates. Um, they're designed in conjunction with employers um, so that students can essentially gain you know, the skills that employers are looking for um, and they also provide progression opportunities to further qualifications um, above and beyond foundation degrees and high national diplomas. Um, they're qualifications in their own right and by that what I mean is that after you complete um, your foundation degree or high national diploma um, you could quite rightly go into employment um, or, um, if you wanted to, you could top up that foundation degree or high national diploma and gain a, and gain a full degree. And I, did, I mentioned earlier that these are quality assured by the University of Hertfordshire and Pearson's. So, extended degrees. Um, they're really a prep year uh, prior to an honours degree. Um, so, students that may want um, further, um, I guess, education in the routes that we offer, mainly in science and engineering. Um, students can study these courses for a year and then move on to an honours degree, which could be a further uh, three years or four years if you wish to do a gap year or a study abroad year in between. And these courses study at Oakland's College. So essentially, foundation degrees, high national diplomas and extended degrees are studied at the college at Oakland's College, whether at St Albans City Campus or Welling Garden City Campus. So I guess the decision is for students or potential students are deciding on university is whether they want to stay local, um, you know, and, and that could be local as in, in staying at home and, and traveling to a university of their choice or a college of their choice. Um, learning in small groups, um, so our higher education courses at the college essentially have around 20 students within a class. Um, some of our courses are as low as six to eight students, depending on that particular program. Um, and I'm sure our program managers who are on this call will be able to provide you with more information uh, about our courses 
after this presentation, but also during this presentation. Um, costs are, are also a, a, a huge factor, as I mentioned before, um, and I have a, a slide on costs and uh, of studying on high national diplomas, foundation degrees and extended degrees, um, a, few, a few slides uh, long. Um, and, you're, and I think one of the key factors that I find um, st students who do study with us um, uh, always inquire about the support that we offer as a college uh, within our higher education provisions. Um, we have a high level of support for our students. Um, you know, we class our students name and not a number. Um, you know, if I was to um, correlate this to what's happening at universities up and down the country, you know, you're, you're studying large lecture theatres um, and essentially um, more independent in your studies. However, at the college, um, there's a large support network available, um, not only through the tutors um, that are teaching on the course, but you're, you have a designated program manager, um, as you'll find out um, in, in, in their talks today. Um, and now program managers will oversee programs um, and ensure students are um, hoping, hopefully um, moving along their program of study um, as best as possible. We also have other support networks uh, within the college um, and we have learning coaches within our um, learning resource centres that do support our students uh, to a higher level uh, within their qualifications. We have academic skills tutors um, that do pop into uh, classes um, and we have all sorts of other support networks that students can tap into. Specifically with courses at the university, um, you really got the best of both worlds. Um, so our foundation degrees, extended degrees, like I mentioned before, are linked um, with the University of Hertfordshire, and that's essentially where you get your qualification. Um, so you can um, use any of the facilities at the university, and I will dip into facilities um, next. So the facilities that really students can uh, tap into um, at the University of Hertfordshire, um, if you're on a foundation degree or extended degree, are obviously access to sports facilities over there. And they've got an amazing range of sports facilities over at the university. Um, they have an on-site gym uh, on both campuses. Um, and they've obviously got the forum um, where there's a range of facilities within the forum, including restaurants and bars, etc. Uh, there's learning resource centers on both campuses. So the College Lane campus and the de Havilland campus. You've also got, I mentioned study abroad, um, so if you were to do an extended degree or a foundation degree, um, you have the option of studying abroad, um, which more information can be provided to you. However, if you are stand, studying on a high national diploma, um, you do have access to these facilities at the University of Hertfordshire, and that's as a guest signing, so you can go and uh, study within the learning resources at both campuses um, and, and be signed in at the front desk uh, of these, um, these buildings. Um, you've also got access to the sports facilities by again signing or um, paying a subscription like any student would do. Um, I, I didn't mention actually, and I, and I will mention now, um, the University of Hearts has a student union um, and it's, Programs that are linked to University of Hertfordshire um, can sign up to the Student Union, um, as well as those courses that aren't linked to the University of Hertfordshire. So that does include our high national programs. Um, and you know, during induction every year, um, the University of Hearts Student Union do come along to induction um, and speak to students about the facilities and, and, the, and the sorts of programs that they do offer, not just at the start of induction, but throughout the whole year. Um, which you know we encourage at Oakland's College, we encourage our students to be part of the university and engage in um, student-focused um, activities. Okay, so so our courses, um, we we offer you know a, a variety of different courses, um, and these are um, based at um, particular campuses. Um, so we have Art and Design, which is based at our Smallford or St Albans City campus. Uh, we have our Business Foundation degree, which is based at our Wellingham City campus. Construction, Civil Engineering, um, Engineering, are based at our Wellingham City campus, along with um, TV and Film Production and Early Years and Science. 
Um, a program that I, I am going to mention, um, which is upcoming and in current development, is HND, HNC in Sport and Exercise Science, which we're planning to launch in September 2021. So, what I'll do now is actually pass it over to um, the program manager for Art and Design, Ruth, who will give you a bit of an overview um, of her program. And Ruth will pass it back to me and then I'll introduce the next program manager um, on the slide. So Ruth, I could just pass it on to you. Okay, um, the Art and Design um, course is the obviously year one, the HNC. Um, you will cover a range of um, specialist art subjects. So we look at a, we, we're really looking at a broad range in that first year um, with um, general drawing and painting skills. We look at printmaking, we do some life drawing. Um, you have the possibility of exploring with textiles and doing some graphics work. Um, and also working both two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally. Um, the first year is sort of set up into projects so that in the first term you'll have an introduction project which gives you a chance to explore um, lots of different skills and different ways of working and um, kind of visual ways of approaching visual language. That's also supported by professional development, which is looking at you as a person, as an artist, and how you can develop and what your kind of aims are. Um, printmaking runs alongside all of that throughout the year and then goes through into a unit called visual narratives, which is more of an illustration kind of brief. Um, the second term, you have um, a Pearson set project, which is all about you, the individual, and how you might develop um, your own practice. So I suppose the, the groups are small and the course is very much about working with you and supporting you to go in the direction you want to go in. And that carries on through into year two, where you will probably specialise more within a certain area. Um, and you will be expected to you do a collaborative project where you work as a team and this year the plan was well the theme was to work, was well-being and the plan was to put on a uh, a shared exhibition but obviously due to the covid virus that didn't happen but the students um produced a facebook page together and that kind of promoted what they were doing and different ideas um the Normally what would happen at the end of that second year is you would take part in a end of year exhibition alongside whatever you might have done with the collaborative project. But obviously, unfortunately, that hasn't happened this year. Um, you also do work placement in the second year. So you're kind of being directed into certain sort of thinking of yourself working within the industry to try things out and extend yourself um, and Another unit you look at is um, working, pr pr um, pr building your own business potentially. Um, and um, that is looked at in the second year and you kind of build on that. So I suppose the broad aim is you, the individual, um, practical and theory with the, the possibility of you work within the different studios. We've got ceramics, we've got printmaking studio, we've got a graphic studio with Apple Max. Um, we've got 3D with the 3D printer, we've all and um, that kind of thing, as well as just the general art and design studios. And you will have a studio space um, which you that you can take up and work in and set yourself up in in the first year and the second year. So that is possible. Oh. Okay, that's it. Something's happened. Sorry, I was cut off there. Is that the end? Um, uh, trying to think if there's anything else. Don't know. I think that's that's kind of the broad the broad sort of range of it. Um, students go have gone on in previous years to do the top up degrees at um, Norwich to do illustration, but also to do um, fine art, and also at the University of Parts the same. Um, fine art and also graphics illustration and someone else left last year to do um, the set up as a um, had, had work as a tattoo apprentice. So there's lots of different opportunities um, for you. I think back to you, Viren. Thanks, Ruth. Um, 
Sorry, I was okay. cut off a bit there. I don't know what happened, but. No problem. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, we'll move on to business. Um, so business is one of our foundation degrees, again, linked to the University of Hertfordshire. Um, I'll, I'll be talking about this program. Um, so this program has a, a number of different pathways, actually, from accounting, uh, general business and marketing. Um, and this particular program uh, is designed to provide uh, those essential skills, knowledge and, and understanding um, of business um, uh, for students then to go on to obviously employment um, after the two years or um, move on to final year um, at the University of Hertfordshire um, or, or go into the second year at University of Hertfordshire on their chosen programme. Um, I do stress that although you know students do top up uh, normally top up at the University of Hertfordshire on this programme um, you do have the opportunity to study at another university um, up and down the country that's linked to you know your particular pathway um, or in business um, on accounting marketing um, etc um, uh, so you could could essentially move um, you know to university um, further north or, or further south so or down south so oh, there's a good range of opportunities here and the program structure enables students to I guess experience um, a, a range of you know, a variety of range of business topics at level four um, where students then can kind of decide on what specialism to go into um, in level five um, so normally um, level four um, modules we call them uh, are all the same for the specialisms that you take so all general mo general uh, modules and that's in level five is when you choose which specialism whether it's accounting general business or marketing that you want to go into and so you have uh, specific modules related to those subjects which then gives you um, your foundation degree uh, business with accounting you know with marketing or with business management um, so students, like I said, um, would top up at the university. Um, and I think it's important to note that um, when I do come to fees, um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about fees that you would expect to pay um, uh, if you finished with us and went on to do a top up um, at another institution. Um, uh, I think also to note is that when you do finish your foundation degree in business um, and say you do go over to the University of Hertfordshire to study your final year, you can take that gap year as your next year or study abroad. Um, and, you know, we've had students in the past um, that have studied foundation degree business for two years and then gone away to you know, another country, America uh, rings a bell. Um, and you know, studied there for a year and then came back and done their top up year at the University of Hertfordshire. OK, I'll, I'll now pass it on to Melissa, who is our program manager for construction uh, and civil engineering. OK, so um, we have yeah two programmes, two pathways, the civil engineering and the construction in the built environment. All our learners are part time learners, so um, they're on day release from their companies um, and they're all in the construction industry. They all work within the construction industry. Um, they work within various roles. We get a huge diversity of students on the course with um, very diverse ages as well. So it's very mixed, mixed groups. Um, the civils and the two pathways, they're very similar. They have six modules which are the same and then civil engineering um, go down the sort of maths and structural design uh, route whereas um, construction does the alternative energy and law and then the ones the modules they have in common um, they do a project in their second year which is a lot of independent study and learning and the students find this um, challenging but when they get through it they really um, really value the experience um, they do construction technology, so they're learning all about what's up and coming within the industry, um, sort of um, building information modelling, for example, will come in there. Um, they do surveying, so this is a very practical module. Um, they use up to date surveying equipment um, and they go out on site um, and set out a site as they would at work. Uh, they do construction information, which is again another practical unit involving um, CAD and Revit programs. So they learn all about how to draw um, and also how to interpret and read drawings. 
um, and uh, they they do they cover things such as um, bills of quantities and how to interpret and how to make a bill of quantities. Um, they also cover science and materials where they're looking at very um, sort of hands on building materials. Uh, what's what's coming onto the market, um, pros and cons of uh, various testing for uh, different materials such as slump tests for um, for cement. Um, and then both pathways also do management and practice as well. Um, so progression wise, I would say a third go back into work and carry on full time work. Um, a third usually go on to something like quantity surveying at Westminster University or South Bank. Depending on the university, sometimes they can go straight into the second year. Um, but that's usually a discussion to be had with the individual universities. And then a third progress onto our, it's our progression route, onto BSE construction management um, degree. And they'll then do a final sort of three years um, and then and then go towards their uh, qualify with their, their full degree. So that's probably everything, um, everything covered, really. So I'll pass back to Viren. Thanks, Melissa. Um, I'll now introduce um, Lizzie Byers, who's our programme manager for early years. Hi, um, our early years programme has been revalidated um, in the last two years, so it's currently a very current and up to date programme. Um, it was validated uh, in consultation with the early years sector, so it meets the needs of the actual sector. Uh, it's part time, one day a week um, for two years, and most of the students work alongside that for a minimum of 10 hours a week. Uh, and that would be in an early year setting, so nurseries or, or schools in the infant department. Um, we have four uh, first year modules, which are legal and professional responsibilities, child development, uh, perspectives on early years and plan learning. And then we have uh, four second year modules, which build on the first year modules, which is special educational needs, which is a uh, research project, uh, well-being, leadership and management. And um, the final one is collaborative practice. Uh, we have a range of assessment processes, mostly essay writing or report writing, uh, presentations or posters. Um, and one of our sort of main advantages is that we're in close proximity to the university and many of my students like to book study rooms there where they can work outside of the classroom in small groups on projects together or, or on their own assignments. And we have excellent uh, LRC resources at Oakland, including access to ebooks. Um, and also that's the same at the university as well. Um, we have a range of visiting speakers that uh, come and support each of the modules. And one of the particular ones that we really enjoy is our safeguarding uh, visiting speaker who's been coming to the programme for about the last 10 years and she's got really up to date current knowledge. Uh, she comes from the teaching programme in Hertfordshire um, and she, she shares her expertise in safeguarding with the students. Um, most of the students opt to progress for the third year on to UH to do uh, their BA honours in early years education, which can they can either finish then or some of them, in fact, the majority of them choose to progress on to achieve their PGCE through either teaching direct or um, which are any other of the teaching qualification routes that are available in schools. OK, I'll pass back to Viren. Thanks, Lizzie. OK, I'll now over to Vaz for engineering. Thanks, Viren. Um, in engineering, we have extended degree in engineering qualification and we have HNC and HND in two pathways. One is the mechanical engineering and the HNC, HND in the electrical and electronic engineering. So first I'll go through the extended degree in engineering. Extended degree is a full time one year course. Um, there are totally eight modules in this course. So six modules will be studied at college and two modules at the University of Hertfordshire. And the modules are maths, engineering science, mechanical science, digital technology, electrical science, study skills and project. Uh, the study skills and project are studied at the university and the rest of the modules at the college. Um, there are assessed through a combination of exams and coursework. Um, there are a wide range of resources, including the ebooks and the university facilities that you can access anytime. 
coming back to the HNC and in both mechanical and electrical and electronic engineering, the main purpose of this BTEC Higher Nationals in engineering is to develop students as professional self-reflecting individuals who are able to meet the demands of employers in this rapidly evolving engineering sector. The qualification also aims to widen across to higher education and enhance the career prospects of those who undertake these. So for the electrical and electronic engineering pathway, students take four mandatory core units and one specialist unit and three additional optional units. And for the HNC in mechanical engineering, again, uh, students take the four mandatory core units, which are um, engineering maths, science, uh, professional engineering project, which is a PSN set one, and engineering design. These are the common units for both pathways, and, and there are some specialist subject units for both in mechanical and electrical uh, engineering. So for mechanical engineering students, it's the mechanical principles, the thermodynamics, and some, some more mechanical based, whereas for the electrical and electronic engineering, it's the electrical electronic principles, digital principles. So they're quite a wide range of units that we undertake here. And for HND, so HND is a progression after the HNC. So again, we have both pathways for HND as well, both mechanical and electrical. So after two years of HNC, there's a progression onto the HND, which is like a one year top up. And for those who would like to further progress, we recently introduced BSc in engineering with management, which is a level six. It's again one year top up degree. So most of our students are employed for the HNCs and HNDs. Um, it's a part time course, day release. So uh, students can come in on their day of study and then rest of the day is then employed. And they can again access the wide range of resources that we have. We specialize um, resources in terms of we have a specialized engineering resource center at the college where we have like CAD, we use the advanced um, Autodesk Inventor as a CAD package. And we have pneumatics and hydraulics equipment. We have both mechanical and electrical workshops. So there's quite a range of resources that, that can be accessed whilst uh, while you're at college. Um, that's it, I guess. Thanks, Viren. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. OK. Um, so I'll pass it over to Mark, who's our program manager for film and TV production. Good afternoon. Just a bit of information about the course. Um, about approximately half the time on the course, students will be filmmaking, and that involves producing a variety of projects for different clients, for different scenarios in different formats. Um, students also do work-based learning on both years as a consistent module where they prepare themselves for industry. That might involve setting up their own business or having uh, a variety of work experience opportunities. Um, as well as that, there is the academic theoretical uh, element to the course in which students learn about the history of film and television, as well as the, the styles and movements that have taken place. The, the course is for all kinds of different people looking to develop their creative and practical skills to a high level uh, across different roles as well. Uh, you'll make a bunch of different projects and that could be short films, documentaries, music videos, advertisements, um, filming live events, uh, corporate work, etc. Uh, you'll develop your business freelance and entrepreneurial skills uh, during the work based learning projects, uh, as well as get a good, strong academic understanding of film and television. Uh, we also do lots of extracurricular enrichment events uh, going out into the community, film festivals, uh, things like that. And um, we have lots of really good industry standard equipment, cameras, lenses, gimbals, sliders, everything that you need uh, to make a film of any nature, really. Uh, we have good post-production facilities and a film studio as well. Um, in terms of progression, lots of students do go to the University of Hearts and complete their BA Honours. Uh, some students go elsewhere to different institutions up and down the country. Some students decide to continue uh, with their work-based learning. Uh, they might have a small uh, company and be making money or um, you know, going into industry as an alternative as well. 
Uh, I think that's it. Thank you, Viram. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Um, so I'll pass it over to Lorna, who's going to be talking about extended degree in science. And Lorna's the program manager for this course. Thanks, Viram. Um, so the extended degree in science is a course that runs over three or four years, depending on what you decide to progress on to. But at Oakland's College, we deliver the initial year for the extended degree. Um, the initial year is a full time course. We tend to timetable students for lessons across three days, um, but there is quite a lot of independent study that needs to be carried out as well. So it is a full time course. Um, the initial year consists of eight modules. Some of the modules are mandatory, so you will be required to study introductory physics, chemistry and biology um, in the first semester together with a maths module. Um, and then in the second semester, you will study another four modules. One of those is mandatory, which is an individual project where you design your own experiments, carry out the experiment and analyze your results and write a nice report at the end. Um, and then you get some choice with the three remaining modules and you can choose between chemistry, maths, physics, mammalian physiology, applied and environmental biology. Um, so you get a little bit of choice in the second semester. In terms of assessment, there is varied assessment that takes place. Some assessments are practically based. You will be involved in quite a lot of practical work, so hands-on practical work. Um, some assessment involves group presentations, essays, reports. Um, there are some exams on the course as well, so you get a, a quite a wide variety of assessment taking place. Um, the course is run at our Welling Garden City campus where we have four well-equipped labs so you'll have access to kind of good equipment to carry out your experiments and carry out your practical work. Um, our students have the possibility depending on how well they do in the initial year at Oaklands College they have the possibility to progress into various different pathways at the University of Hertfordshire and the pathways are quite varied. Um, biological science pathways such as molecular biology, biochemistry um, and lots of subjects allied to medicine. So things like physiotherapy, paramedic science, pharmacy, nursing. Um, you can also progress into psychology or sport related um, degree programmes as well. So it gives you the option, this initial year in science gives you the option to progress into lots of different um, degree programmes at the university. The majority of our students do progress to the University of Hertfordshire um, and the majority get onto the programme that they want to get onto. Some students actually, if you don't quite meet the tariff that's required, we ask students to have a backup choice. So maybe a degree programme with a slightly lower entry requirement. Um, so you'll always have a backup choice. So you should be able to progress as long as you pass the initial year, you should be able to progress onto a degree programme at the university. The majority of our students go to the University of Hertfordshire. Um, some students in the past actually have progressed to different universities to study a degree programme at another university. The initial year in science doesn't result in a qualification, um, but some universities outside the, uni the University of Hertfordshire will acknowledge that this year you've completed um, will enable you to progress, but you would need to check with the individual universities. But we have had students in the past that have gone to the Royal Vet College, for example, to study biomedical science um, following the initial year in science. Um, I think that's all I've got to say. So I'll pass back to Viren. Thanks, Lorna. OK, um, I guess that brings us to our um, um thoughts on costs actually for, for, for these qualifications um and so the, the costs for the fees for 2020 uh, intake uh, for foundation degree extended degrees is 6,600 6,165 sorry uh, per year and, and the higher nationals is at 6,000 um per year and, and that's for our full-time course fees um and um, if we're looking at our part-time high national fees, um, they vary according to uh, programmes. 
And I think I've got to mention there that early is um, fits into the foundation degrees and extended degrees costs um, of 6165. Um, and early years is a part time provision. Um, I think it's important to note here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is that when students do progress, um, you know, uh, to to a top up course, um, potentially at the university or another provider, another university, um, it's important to note the fee, uh, the hiking fee that they or you may be charged. Um, and currently, I think the University of Hertfordshire have, have a, a fee of nine thousand per year, uh, depending on the on the course that you you would study over there. Um, there are there are the um, you know provisions of student loans and grants um, that part time and full time students can access. Um, and I think if you would like more information on student loans and grants um, for for particular programs, um, you know you could all you could look them up on the um, college website um, or the um, student finance website, which we can direct you uh, to. Okay. I, uh, would it be a good idea actually just to um, let you read um, some of the success stories um, that have over the past um, on particular programs? So maybe I'll give you, you know, um, just under a, under a minute or so just to have a quick read and then I'll flick on to the next slide. Um, excuse me, Vera, and we have had a question relating to the extended degrees. Someone's okay. just asked, how do extended degrees differ from access to HE? Lorna, would you want to answer that question? Yeah, of course, I was thinking I would jump in there. Um, they're actually quite similar. Um, they both enable you to progress to university. The, the thing about the extended degree, if you wanted to go to the University of Hertfordshire, when you start the extended degree, you're already a University of Hertfordshire student. So you'd be a University of Hertfordshire student, even though you're studying at Oakland's College for that first year. Um, I would say the main difference in terms of course content, it depends what you want to progress on to at university. Um, in terms of course content, they're fairly similar. I would say with the access course, it's possibly more designed for students that have been out of education for a little while. So you develop more study skills and things, I would say, from a I've taught on both access and extended degree in science. And I would say on the access course, you develop more study skills because it's designed maybe more for people that have been out of education for a little while. Whereas the extended degree, you um you still develop study skills, but there's possibly less um, emphasis placed on that. Um, I would also say that in terms of um, age of students, uh, extended degree, the extended degree students tend to be possibly average age, a little bit younger than access students. But that's I'm not trying to be ageist, um, but that is generally access students are a little bit maturer. So in terms of the classroom environment, it can be a little different. Um, although having said that, I think the extended degree students are generally very motivated and driven as well. So you get a good learning environment in both. Um, but they both prepare you for um, degree programmes at the university. Thanks, Lorna. Um, and, I, and I would also say, Nader, that if we could provide any further information or direction to our website um, about the access courses that we offer, um, that may be a, a good starting point as well. We can certainly include a link to our access courses um, in the information that goes out after this event. Thank you. Um, right, so uh, Nadia, I think um, if there are any other questions, um, we just we could just hold off until after this slide as well. Um, that'd be brilliant, and if we uh, we could answer them all in one go. Um, I would say what I what I wanted to mention as well, um, and I think this is actually the last slide, one of the last slides, um, is graduation day. Um, uh, well, after you complete your uh, foundation degree um, and higher national diploma, um, you know, the two years uh, that you've studied, um, 
you um, you do and and HNCs as well. You, you do have a um, graduation at, at the college, um, which is you know a, a great evening uh, celebrating your achievements um, uh, while studying at the college. Um, and I guess you you do kind of have the best of both worlds because you have a graduation for your HND um, foundation degree, uh, and also when you progress to university. Um, you have a, a second graduation actually at the University of Hertfordshire if you were to progress to the University of Hertfordshire or graduation at any other institution that you do you follow on towards. Um, which, like I said, is, is a great evening uh, for family and friends to celebrate your, your achievement. OK, so this is actually the last slide. Um, so there's, um, I guess now is a good opportunity to, to ask any questions or um, what we have done is just put up um, details of our HE program managers um, in terms of if you have any particular questions you want to ask um, for particular courses, um, you know, happy to after this presentation um, or webinar, you know, happy to for you guys to just um, email in. Viren, one question um, we've had is how do I apply? Is it the same for an HN as an FD? Yes, so for HN high national courses, uh, we're asking students to um, either apply via UCAS or uh, the college website. Um, and for university based courses, so that's our foundation degrees and extended degrees, that will be directly through UCAS. Um, and if, if any um, potential applicants want um, course codes or um, campus codes, we, we can offer those uh, out. And I think we have actually put them on our college website um, in terms of campus code and course codes and um, any particular finance codes that they may need. Uh, sorry, Viren, just very quickly, FD early years, they apply directly to UH, not through UCAS. Yes, actually, that's the only one. Um, I'll just uh, jog my memory. Thanks, Karen. And the eight part time HNCs directly to Oakland. Yeah. And uh, a further question that we've had is about accommodation. Is there accommodation available? Yes, a good, a good question. Um, so for our foundation degree courses and our extended degree courses, um, because they're linked to University of Hertfordshire, uh, students can apply for accommodation um, on site, um, whether it's at the College Lane campus, the Haviland campus, or just local accommodation linked to the university. Um, fortunately for our higher national courses, um, we, don't, we don't offer any on-site accommodation at the moment. And further information, sorry, Nadia, further information about accommodation um, can be found on the uh, University of Hearts, um, his website. OK, thank you, Viren. Um, and a further question that's that's come through is, are HE students eligible for the discounted travel scheme run by the college? I, I think yeah, I'll... It's the I'll, UNO I'll, buses, isn't it? I can confirm that they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. And the great thing about our um, discounted travel scheme is that it uh, it's valid throughout holidays, weekends. So um, once you've got a student card, uh, you can use it. You know, it's not just term time. That's a good point, Nadia, actually. Um, I, I did forget to mention that um, students that um, are linked to a university based course. So, you know, your foundation degrees or extended degrees uh, get a University of Hearts card. ID card and they also get the college ID card. So um, <laughs> I guess you, there are lots of and the college students also who are linked to higher national courses have the use of those cards to, to gain discounts as well from the offers that students normally would get. <laughs> OK, question from Dennis. Has the college received further advice from the government regarding a potential open day? Um, unfortunately, I don't think we have at the moment. Uh, at the moment, we still 
uh, are all social distancing. The college is currently shut um, and we really don't know the situation going forward, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, hi, Dennis. Um, what I would say to that, uh, Nadia, as well, is that um, if um, a potential applicant is interested in a particular course, um, you know, we could initially organise, you know, it could be a chat with the programme manager about that particular course um, to discuss um, the facilities um, and potentially an opportunity, you know, um, to, to um, somehow, uh, whether online, view um, some of the, re the campus facilities that we have, if that's mm -hmm. what the question is leading to. And I wonder if we do have um, an online video of our campuses. Um, um, yeah, Dennis, um, we will send this webinar to you in an email following um, uh, following this, and we will also have links to our virtual tours of the campuses. Brilliant. OK, any further questions from anybody? Or is there anything else anybody would like to raise? OK. So thank you everybody for taking part. As I said, this um, record, a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website. And to those who signed up, we will be emailing a copy as well. So thank you everybody for attending. Um, and uh, stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks all. Thank you.